Well, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Wave at me if you can hear me, Ricky. You there? I see Ricky's face, face and some other folks. Yay. All right. So we are here with the uh, South Carolina American Revolution Sester Centennial Commission. Uh, excited about getting all of the counties, all 46 in South Carolina, up and running with our County 250 committees. I apologize to those of you who have been on some of these before. It will be a little bit repetitive, but we're going to go a little more in depth today uh, with talking about growing your group after you first get established and, and making sure that we're being as um, diverse and inclusive as possible. We're also going to talk about those grants that only the County 250 committees can apply for. So uh, my name is Heather Hawkins, for those of you who don't uh, know me. Um, of course, our uh, rest of our support team that's often out in the counties is Molly Fortune, our executive director. She's literally out in the, in the county right now talking to some folks. And I have on the web, um, webinar today, Bill Davies. Uh, Bill, I think I've muted everybody, so you'll have to unmute yourself. But um, if you want to say hello and welcome everybody to, to the webinar as well today. I'm delighted that all of you all would join us. I see some names that I recognize, and as Heather said, we might repeat some things today, but I think the two goals that our commission is pursuing primarily are worthy of, of repeating. Uh, number one, of course, education. Uh, education should always be number one, but in our case, what we want to educate people about is the primary role that South Carolina took in winning independence. Uh, the American Battlefield Trust hired a group of eminent historians a few years ago with the idea that the um, focus should be on Boston or New York or Philadelphia. And this group of historians who were all from above the Mason-Dixon line came back with the sparkling and, and surprising response that those places were important, but really independence was one in the Carolinas, particularly in South Carolina. Many of us learned that in school, but we've been kind of overlooked in the past, but it is the truth and it's a, it's a good thing that we've got to sell. The other goal, of course, is a little more local in the sense that it is local economic development. We want to bring tourists off of our interstates. We've got all these interstates and these hundreds of thousands of people that go by every day. And we want to get them to the rural parts of South Carolina so that they will be, we'll be able to educate them, number one, but of course, so that they will also have the opportunity to visit our, our commercial interest so that they can stop and get gas and get t-shirts and get hats and, and things with the palmetto tree and the crescent moon on it or whatever, uh, and spend money. And then they can get back on the interstates and go home. That'll be fine. But we really want to bring not only education, but we want to bring a little extra work and a little extra business to the rural parts of the state that really could use that. So that's what our goals are. We hope that you will join us in helping support those goals. And if we can help in any way by attending something, by making presentations or whatever you would like, you can always contact me or Heather and we'll try to do something for you. Thank you very much for attending today. And thank you, Bill. Y'all have no idea the thousands of hours he has put in across the state uh, and he is still continuing to do so. So please reach out to us and he or Molly or myself would be glad to come meet with with you all. Um, and just a reminder that, of course, we know that the marketing will crescendo on July 4th of 2026, but there's so much more to this story, this revolutionary era. And we consider that 1770 to 1783. That takes you from the Boston Massacre and the end of uh, British government, basically in South Carolina, all the way up through the signing of the Treaty of Paris. Uh, and so that's 2020 to 2033. Don't panic about having to do events all during that, but it is more of an era. We just want to emphasize that there's more than just that one day involved. So thank you for all out there who are volunteering and working with your county uh, committees. Um, you are doing an amazing job. This picture here is actually from Lawrence County. They jumped out ahead as they uh, began to look at their new museum downtown that really drew them to work on a revolutionary tour in their county. So there's lots of potential. They're a great uh, county that you can talk to that has kind of gotten out ahead of a lot of us, uh, which is amazing. They've done a great job. 
So we're going to go through the steps uh, pretty quickly because a lot of this you've probably heard before. Um, this is also reiterated on our website and we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, the first step is find out if there's already a committee in your county. I do have a web page on SouthCarolina250.com where you can look and see if there is a primary uh, contact public contact. Sometimes though these committees um, have not already established a primary contact, but there is a beginning of a committee. So feel free to reach out to me as well if you're interested in finding out if there's already one there. Uh, and as Highland would say, there, there can be only one. So we do encourage that there be only one committee per county official committee and of course though other entities can work together and apply for individual grants uh, just not the two grants that we're going to talk about today which are only available to those county 250 committees so step two reach out to us we'd love to come meet you and and bill would love to get on the road some more and come see you and help you gather your stakeholders i get a lot of questions about how big does it need to be well um we are typically seeing and again this is your committee in your community you know the politics and how this works but we're typically seeing between 11 to 15 voting members executive committee three to five voting members and but then think about how the projects that you're working on. Um, many hands make for easier work. And as somebody who ran a volunteer program with 180 volunteers, I know that the more volunteers I have, the more I can fill in. But I also know that the, there's going to be a core group that does most of the work, and that's fine. And then having lots of people on some of these subcommittees is a great way to have um, just some backup when you have those days where you do need extra folks, particularly for your events that you might plan. So start with your historic groups. We know everybody started there, which is perfect because they have the passion for this. Uh, museums, historical societies, DAR, SAR, um, children of the American Revolution, and not living in this world until now, I didn't know how many different groups there are. So make sure we're, you're including your colonial dames and your different groups and all are welcome at the table. Don't forget your college and university history departments, um, genealogy groups, reenactors in your community. Uh, so you're going to start there. But um, be intentionally inclusive. So there's this is a chance if we want to tell a more complete story. Uh, you need to have those voices on your committee. Uh, African Americans, Native Americans, women and children, um, Asian Americans, uh, Latinx Americans. Um, who else needs to have a voice? Um, so think about that. There is a website um, on our, there's a page on our website uh, telling a more complete story uh, where you can find some more links and references and things that can help you on your projects of telling a more complete story. Diversify your skill sets. So this is the time to look beyond those historians. Uh, and I think this is really important um, as we know that the core group is going to be the historians, but Bill mentioned education and cultural tourism. And as you work on those two goals, you need to have some of those folks at the table with those skill sets to back up the historians. So don't forget your school district, don't forget your chamber of commerce, your county city PRT, your social media major at your local college, so a, a college student, um, a merchant group, business alliance, and of course those elected officials uh, and council of governments, make sure that you think about those uh, councils, governments, and more um, before you request a resolution. And this is something that we think uh, really helps get the resolution passed. And Bill, if you want to talk any more about this, of making sure that you have a really core group before you go before county council. And also, this is a way to um, make sure you have a champion on county council who's going to guide you through that process of getting the resolution passed. Bill, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Uh, you may have to unmute yourself again. Yeah, what, what we found is that it really is helpful if you can get a chance to talk with someone on county council ahead of time and get them on your side. Obviously having somebody in any group is helpful to you, but having town administrators, county administrators, having people in the tourism departments, all of those things are helpful. And you'll most counties have a uh, group of municipalities. You should, if you can, get someone from every one of those groups. And if you can get one uh, person that's an elected official in one of those groups, it's helpful. And when you have your resolution prepared and you're ready to present it, whether you ask us to come help or you want to do it on your own, 
if you have people in the audience who are from around the county, it helps. The county council people understand who their voters are and they recognize them and they they look a little bit more carefully at you if you're backed by a number of people. We've had county council meetings where we had 40 or 50 people come as members and stand up saying that they're supporting it. Um, that sort of activity is, while it's unusual to get that many, but it really is helpful. So you've got to think like a politician a bit. We're trying to get the counties on our side. We're not asking them for any money at that point. We just want their blessing to set up the county council, I mean, the county committee, uh, the official committee as Heather was talking about earlier. Thank you, Bill. And I know that you said that it's not necessarily that they have to appoint people to this committee. Uh, and if you come in already with a core group um, you, that you that kind of helps you establish that you just want their blessing as the official group. And the first resolution is, as you said, not about money. Doesn't mean you can't ask them for money down the road. It doesn't mean that you can't ask them to be your fiscal agent, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, but this first resolution is just to say this is important. And we as a county council say that that uh, this is the official group that will be working on the education and cultural tourism of this event, of this era that's coming up. All right. One of the things I did want to mention um, is reaching out to your tourism regions. And um, we had a meeting not that long ago with the scatter groups, and they are very receptive to this. They have already put aside money to put to promote American Revolution in the next couple of years. Uh, this is money that they have already designated what it is for, but they are willing to promote your visitable sites. So once they are, you somebody could go and actually visit them without you know, a danger of, you know, pull off, there's plenty of pull off space and there's interpretive signs and things like that. If you have visitable sites and also any events that you have, make sure you're sharing them with your scatter groups. They are doing tourism for you already. They are working on that and they'll be glad to help. And just, I would go ahead and just find out who your, your person is in your community, reach out to them and you can find all the regions on their website and the contacts and just ask them, you know, what can you do for us and what you know do you not have the capacity to do because they're doing lots of other things other than the american revolution so but they're willing to help and they're interested in this exciting anniversary and the potential it has for tourism in your community the other group that i wanted to mention to reach out to is your councils of government so what's nice about this is there's no um you know need to reinvent the wheel you've already got a group that's collaborating where it's built in uh, you still have the individual counties. We think it's important for every county to have their own committee so that nobody gets overrun and doesn't get left out. It's helpful to have that voice, but we're all about collaboration. I know there's some groups already looking at collaborating because maybe they were part of a district back in, in the 1700s, not a county. So they're already naturally set up to have a district to work together. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel on a project if you are uh, collaborating. And uh, these councils of governments are great assets. They get the economic development regional view often, um, and they're wonderful to reach out to. And you see their website there as well. And I'll send you the link to all these in my follow-up email. And then don't forget your rural community members. As somebody who grew up at the second largest town in my county, I know that those seven miles between Newberry and Prosperity are very long. And it means that sometimes Prosperity feels left out. And it means that uh, you need to make sure that the unincorporated communities also get taken care of and the different neighborhoods within a city even. Um, make sure that you recognize that a lot of times rural is where the action happened. And we want to make sure the entire Entire county is represented as you build your coalition. And again, this doesn't have to be that core group. This can be part of your teams that are working on specific projects, and it just gives you a broader base as you grow your group. So we want to do the grow that group first and then send me your main contact information. This is helpful as you're trying to recruit these new members. 
We have a web page, as I said, where the public contact is listed. This is your external primary contact. This is on our website, and this can be, for example, the museum. And you've told uh, the person who answers the phone what to do when someone calls and says, I'd like to volunteer. So um, this would be, could be the museum or some primary contact um, where somebody can answer the phone or answer the emails, or it could be an email that you set up that is someone is reg regularly checking. Um, so just let me know what that is so we can help direct people to your um, committee. And then we have an internal primary contact. This would be an individual. Um, and the, the public contact can be an individual as well, but often I'm seeing a the primary contact is an individual. The public contact is going to be that external contact is probably going to be um, a a location where there's somebody there to answer the phone. Um, and that's very helpful, especially if, as long as they know what to say when um, you when somebody calls. So the contact information spreadsheet we know is going to change. And I also will say this is there's a sample that I'll show you where to find. And it's on our website. It's also on in our web grants program. You do not have to do it exactly like I had it. This is my, this is the way I would have filled it out. Um, so I gave you some examples. Um, I do need an uh, address because we're hoping to do some printed newsletters down the road. We would love a, um, you know, a phone number and um, email for all of the people on your committee. There's also a VIP section. This helps me when you receive a grant. I know who the local press is because you've sent me a contact. I know who the county council chairman is that you want to make sure I notify when we um, when you receive a grant or something else, other press release. So there's a VIP section. Um, but again, if you want to do your own spreadsheet, that is perfectly fine. Just remember we need that Internal contact is going to be the person that I send information to from directly from SC250, and I need that external contact who's going to answer the phone or answer the email when someone's interested in being part of your group. Those are the two main things I need as soon as possible, and then the rest um, we can uh, fill in as we go. And if you have an updated list, please send those to me as well. So once you have your group, now we can go before County Council. We found that champion. They're going to help us walk through this. We have a sample resolution that Bill and, and many others worked on, and it, you can just fill in the blanks um, or you can make it your own. So just remember um, that we do need that sent back to SC250, sent to me, so that I have it on record. It will also be required when we get in the Web Grants program. So um, we gave ourselves a name. As I said, Buford County 250 is kind of the standard, um, and we would like we kind of like that. But if you want to name it something else, that's perfectly fine. You've passed your resolution, and now here's the important part: send it to me. So send me your resolution, send me that contact sheet, and then you are officially the County 250 group. Huzzah! All right. And so now, does anybody have any questions before we get started about grants? Do I have any questions from anybody? I, you may have to unmute yourself if you would like to ask a question. All right. Well, and I'm going to go jump right into some grants, um, deciding on County 250 priorities and applying for grants. The biggest challenge often for a group is who's going to be my fiscal agent? and um, talked about what specifically that person has to do. So the, as we go through the grant process, this fiscal agent will provide fiscal agent documentation for the application. They will officially sign the grant agreement. So they do have to be willing to do that. They will actually be the applicant, um, the fiscal agent will, on behalf of your County 250 group. Uh, follow local uh, procurement policy. Grants, um, we've had some clarification on this. Grants do not officially fall under state procurement. That means that you are following your local procurement policy, or if you do not have a procurement policy, we do have links to the state procurement as best practices uh, to follow. This person will also manage receipts uh, and provide those for the final report. And we don't anticipate this, but if there is a request for audit of funds uh, randomly selected by the state auditors, then we ask your help with providing any additional documentation for that. So let's talk about these two grants that only the county, official county 250 committees can apply for. The first one is non-competitive. That means all you got to do is 
finish the paperwork. It's a lot of paperwork, I won't lie to you. But once you get it done, you can clone that first grant and apply it towards your next one um, in the system. Now, and again, it's $3,000 and only the official County 250 committees can apply for these organizing grants. We do ask um, in th this grant application, you'll see that you'll have to select one of these drop downs, uh, one of these topics. These are very broad and we do not expect $3,000 to cover everything in one of these topics. But these are categories that your project could fall under. We are strongly suggesting strategic planning as your first step if you've not already done that. And that is something that we think really works well with this organizing grant, but you even have other as long as you are specific in your other. I've had people work on um, first phase of their marketing. So they're just gathering volunteers, doing Facebook ads, things like that. We have a group that is already to the point where they're doing lectures and putting in a kiosk to get excitement going at one of their venues. So there's lots of things you can do with this. We just need to have a specifics of what you want to do with your $3,000. What is your primary thing that you want to get done and how, what would you spend money on to get that accomplished? Now, the other grant that is only available to the official County 250 committees is the County Asset Assessment and Historic Tourism Plan. The sample one that we're doing is with Buford, so the Battle of Port Royal Island will definitely be on their list of assets. And this is not only um, battles and, and sites, but people and ideas that, and um, you know, there'll be a lot of things that'll be in this phase one of the county asset assessment. But then the, again, the second part of that is how can we take these assets that we have now verified are historically the right place, and then now we'll turn them into visitable sites so that they aid our cultural tourism in our community. So it's a two phase um, uh, grant and it does require a match. So this is a perfect opportunity when you do go back to your county council or city council or someone else um, and say, we are gonna do this, we're gonna apply for this grant, we have to have $10,000 to match it. We think this is definitely tourism related. Um, for next year, can you, you know, add a $10,000 to the PRT budget or uh, a tax or this is an opportunity to really take a look at these historic tourism um, assets that you have and how we can best monetize them in our tourism community. All right. And then we have nine other grant programs. Local museum panel grant, which can even be outside of a museum and maybe directs you back to the museum. Local activities grant, I expect a lot of you County 250s to be using this grant. That is a matching grant, it's 80-20 match. So you uh, would have to have 20% match for that. But this could be anything from a marketing plan to an event. I see a lot of the events related to this. Um, a lecture series, uh, you know, anything that you're looking to do in your local activities, an art project um, could be under that. Then there are some research grants, publication grants, education grants, um, if you have an education project, a, a signage grants, and this is one where it could be the renovation of a current um, sign or new interpretive signs or marking your 1700s road that comes through your county. And then site grants, planning, acquisition, development, and renovation. This could be verifying the archaeology on a site. This could be then acquiring that property. Uh, development could be putting in the interpretive signs, the pull off. And then uh, a renovation example is the one that I have here pictured, um, the Battle of Sullivan's Island. And you see a breach inlet. That's our one of our first uh, site grants was for the renovation of that little corner of Sullivan's Island that everybody passes by and doesn't realize how important that was to keeping the British from taking Sullivan's Island uh, when they first uh, attacked the harbor there. So um, there are seven other grant programs. All of this information is available on our website. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me uh, regarding that. The County 250 organizing grants, as soon as you get your information in the system, submit it. Anytime between now and May 9th, because it's non-competitive, 
It only takes uh, me to say the paperwork's there, our executive director to, to agree, and then we submit it to be reviewed by um, Department of Archives and History, and it goes to finance. So as soon as you can get everything submitted in your County 250 organizing grant, go ahead and get it in, and we'll, it does take a while to get everything processed, but um, go ahead and get those in as soon as you can. All other grants, including that County Asset Assessment Grant, is they're competitive. So quarterly review while funds last. So the first deadline is coming up on September 16th. The next deadline will be November 9th. So don't panic if you don't get it in for the first one, um, but know that um, we eventually may run out of money, but we uh, are gonna have quarterly reviews uh, while the funds last. And we've been very, been very, the legislature has been very generous and we do have over $7 million. Um, a lot of that is for other projects that the commission is taking on and is more geared towards the site development, but um, we do have some funds that, and we want to have as competitive a process as possible. So we have the best projects that are selected for this money that's the, the people's money. So grant funding distribution. So when will you get the money? Uh, there is an award date listed on our website for all of these grants. You can find out when that is when you look that up. The first one, for example, would be October 4th, would be the when we would tell the folks who get their, their grant submissions in no later than September 16th, we would let you know if you were awarded a grant uh, by October 4th, no later than October 4th. Um, this uh, would mean that we would do 100% upfront funding for the organizing grants if your fiscal agent is a county or a municipality. All other fiscal agents, we would do 80% upfront and 20% would be sent to you upon final paperwork. Now, if this would keep you from getting the project done, um, I know a lot of you don't have a lot of cash, uh, you know, with your volunteer organization. Um, let us know. We can work some things out on that last 20% as long as we have an invoice and or something else that we know it's going to go directly to. Uh, we can work with you, but we do encourage you to make your um, contracts with these these uh, these consultants to be based on that structure so that knowing that you're not going to have all the money up front uh, if you are, are another a fiscal agent that's not a county or municipality. Now that's for the organizing grants. All other competitive grants, it is 80% up front, 20% upon final paperwork with receipts. And that is um, actually kind of strange. A lot of most state grants are reimbursement grants. So, but we're trying to get you guys as much of the money up front because we know that you're cash strapped as these volunteer organizations. So uh, thank you for working with us on that. And if you have questions or concerns, just let me know. Well, we are spending the people's money, so that means documentation and paperwork. And so, um, unfortunately, there have been some naughty people along the way, and there's some rules that we have to jump through and some hoops we have to jump through uh, because of that, unfortunately. Um, but that's how we came up with working with the South Carolina the, uh, part, the Department of um, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism has graciously agreed to let us be inside of their web grants program. And uh, so it does say Discover SC, uh, Discover South Carolina, which is the theme for PRT, when you go to this first page. And you will have to register in this system and apply in this system, but I am gl glad to meet with y'all one-on-one and go through your grant and help you make sure everything gets into the system. There are six sections, a general info, cover sheet, a narrative, assurances, support documents, and the budget. Then we're going to talk about that now as we go to do a demo. So let me exit and share my web browser. Does anybody have any questions as I'm pulling this up? You might have to unmute yourself if you need to ask a question. Anybody? Okay. Well, I'm going to go into a demo now. Um, this is the website. And actually, you know, before I do that, I am going to let's see, go to our website, South Carolina, all written out, 250.com. And I want to mention there is there's so much information here. If you go to the county, 
There, this is where the webinars, once this is, this is being recorded, so I will be posting this here, a link to, to this webinar here. Um, you can f find out some general information about volunteering. And here is the County 250 page. This, there's so much here. Click directly on the link to get the basic page. And then there are all these additional links to the side here. So here is the County 250 Committee Organizing Handbook. And Bill and Molly and many others worked lots of hours on this guidance. So you have this step-by-step, uh, -step, and it's got room to make notes in it. And so there's lots of information. It's basically what we've been talking about today um, that's there. Here are those steps that we've been talking about as well. And you can learn more about the County 250 Organizing Grant by clicking here. Um, and there's so many other things. Pro tips for running a, a meeting, uh, economic impact of tourism, telling a more complete story, uh, and then funding and basic fiscal guidance. There are a lot of things on here that are helpful links. And then this is the link that connect to a committee is where we have listed those primary contacts so people can go to our website and say, oh, do I have a committee in my community? I want to go to Greenwood and I'm going to uh, send an email to Ms. Kelly and join their group. So that is um, very important. That's why I need those, those contacts so I can add you guys to this list. So in addition to the County 250 Committee, all this information, there's also the SC250 grants. You can click on an individual grant. They're all listed here. And then, then there's some grant recipient guidance once you are a, a grantee. And then you can also just click on this main link. And here's where you go. You can click on this here. Excuse me, my watch thought I was talking to them. <laughs> so uh, this is a great link here because it lists everything on a front and back sheet. This gives you all of the deadlines. It gives you all of the grant distribution um, and the amounts, the up to amounts for the grants. So if you need something particularly to, to share with your committee or your county council, this is a, a thing, great thing to uh, download and have on hand. And this is again under just clicking this link here, not necessarily going to one of these drop downs. And um, again, it gives you grants that are available now. It gives you all those details and you can click here to learn more and apply. That takes you to the individual pages, for example, for the organizing grants. This is gonna tell you what you need for all of your support documents. There's that list of, of topics that you can choose. And it tells you that only the official County 250 committee or their fiscal agent can apply for this grant. This is how you apply for it. Here are those fiscal documents that you're gonna need under support materials that you can help, but that'll help you gather those before you get ready to apply. And then there's a link down here to just register for the grant program. And I hope everybody has already done this, but if not, click here to register is the yellow button. And the two things to really remember on this um, registration page, program area of interest. So you wanna make sure that you are choosing South Carolina American Revolution Sester Centennial Commission because PRT has all their other grants in here. Um, and you can, maybe you wanna do a recreational trail as part of your projects. You might wanna apply for one of these other ones. Um, so, but this here um, is the one that, that sends the notification to me and I know that you've registered and the only reason I have to review it is to make sure we don't have duplicates in the system. So always make sure that you're selecting that one. The other thing to remember, um, this name is the organization name here. And this is very important. Do you know your EIN number um, with the IRS, the EIN number? If you do, great. Because if I choose county government, it's gonna require it, that federal employer identification. But if you don't know your EIN number, you can select individual and it will bypass that. So um, that is okay um, for right now. We will have to eventually have that before, if you are um, awarded a grant, you will have to have an EIN number and you will have to have, or your fiscal agent will have to have an EIN number. You can reg register as a County 250 member or chairman um, and put it the County 250 here but note that we do encourage best practice is to have the fiscal agent be the actual applicant 
and you can be registered separately and be listed as an additional applicant and that allows both of you to work in the system at the same time. You can do all the hard work of filling out the narrative and doing those items and then they can come in and, and maybe attach some of the financial documents that are required and eventually sign the grant agreement in the system. So um, we, you can just keep that uh, organizational type individual if you don't know your EIN number. Now I'm going to go back because I have a sign in already. Well, let's try it again. Okay. There we go. I'm going to sign in as my external user. And I'm going to go through and uh, fill out an application. Anybody have any questions before I start an application? Okay. So we're going to do the first County 250 organizing grant. I am going to make sure it says 23 fiscal year, and I went to funding opportunities here on the left. So I'm going to the County 250 organizing grant. And you see, I've already got some started. There can be only one official County 250 grant from your organization, um, but obviously I'm helping some other counties work on theirs. But I'm going to start a new application. This is your title. So my example that I'm going to do today is Baxley County is going to do a strategic plan. So that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to say Baxley County um, 250 strategic plan. And this is the primary contact. This is should probably be your fiscal agent's primary contact here. I'm going to save that. Okay. And it's going to make you save multiple times on this, this general information page. What organization? This is going to be my Baxley County. That's my test county. But I'm also associated with some of these others to help them do their. Uh, so make sure you're, you're choosing the right organization. I'm going to save my form again. And here's where I can list additional applicants. And this is where if you um, let me know, I can make sure that we're associating as many people as you need to your organization. And that way you can both be in there working on the grant. Now, I do remind you, oh, it's, not, it's not best practice to be in there at the same time, but one person can work on the narrative and then say, okay, it's time to work on the budget, or you can pass it to your treasurer that way. So you can list additional applicants here. I also, if you need my help, I'll be glad to, if you want to add me um, to the organization, I can, I can do that. And then you can add me as an additional applicant and I can come in and help you and, and lead the way if we do a, a Web, WebEx, just the two, two of us together. So I'm going to save my form and you'll see now my components, my general information is now complete. I'm going to now go to my cover sheet. So application type. My Baxley County is my applicant, so they're the fiscal agent. So they are the fiscal agent representing the official County 250 committee. There may be some County 250 committees who are going to establish their own bank accounts and be their own fiscal agent. That's fine. Um, that's just it's best practice uh, with grants to have the fiscal agent be the applicant. Now, who's going to manage your grant funds? Because I said it was Baxley County, the fiscal agent that is the applicant, I'm going to say applicant is going to manage the funds. Now, the project director, best practice is to have this person be someone with the County 250 committee. So we're going to have, um, you know, since Bill's on with us today, we're going to have Bill Davies, and he is with the Baxley County 250 committee. And he's got, we've got, a, it's not going to let me go forward without something in here. So give me just a second. And I'm going to, um, well, there's Bill's email. <laughs> and 1234 Main Street in uh, Baxley, South Carolina, my made up county and state in honor of our chairman. And okay. So this person, project director, um, because this will go into our grant agreement, I really like the project director to be the county 250 committee person. 
Now the fiscal officer is who is that person on the county level in this example? Who, who is that person with your fiscal agent who's going to actually be going in and signing your grant agreement and handling all of your receipts? So we're going to say um, that Alexander Hamilton is our finance director and he's with Baxley County Finance and he's going to have the same bill, same phone number. Whoops. And and he's going to be at 2345 Main Street in Baxley. And note that South Carolina is the first thing, so it always throws me off. And it'll send you to South Dakota, so watch, the, watch that there. Now, this question about authorizing officer, this means that um, are one of these two people the person who can say, yes, we want to spend money on this. So an example might be that Alexander Hamilton is the finance director, but the county administrator really wants to sign off on any actual money being spent in this account. So you're gonna, you would say, no, one of these two people above here is not the right person, and you'd put the county administrator's information here. But in this example, uh, I'm going to say that Bill's got the authority to say yes to spending money, so we're going to say yes here and save our form. Okay. And you'll note that we've gone on to our cover sheet um, is now complete. So I'm going to mark as complete. So I have two check marks. We're looking to have all these sections with check marks. This is you saying you are complete. It is not the ch system checking that you are complete. I do want to mention that. So, but you have to have all of these checked for this red to turn green. So the next one is the narrative. And one of the things, and I'm going to show you one of the tricks I like to do. Um, if you go to back to the funding opportunities, and I'm going to go down to the bottom. This, uh, this is, again, the same information that's on the website. And at the very bottom of this, you have your contact information spreadsheet that you're going to have to complete and submit. Your uh, sample resolution is here so that you can um, make sure that's uploaded. You'll have to have both of those items in your support materials to prove that you are a County 250 committee, the official committee, um, because those are the only people who can apply for these grants. So if you need copies of those, you can download those here. You can also download a County Organizing Grant application. This is a Word document that you can use to play along. And let's see if I can share that screen. So I've actually got one pulled up. Let's see if I do this. Nope, that's not sharing. Give me one second. Get it to share again, and I'll share my other screen. Okay, there we go. So we now are looking at uh, the Word document. Um, and this just helps me kind of, and you can fill out what your project title is and gather all your information for your um, finance director and all of that there. Um, this is where I think it's very helpful is going through the narrative. And I'm going to be cutting and pasting from this um, because I've pre-written my answers. So I like to use this to pre-write my answers for the narrative. And I've figured out what my timeline is going to be. And I've sent this off to my um, person who's going to sign my assurances section um, to make sure they feel comfortable with all the assurances so they can read that at their leisure. And this is also where it lists all of my support documents that I'm required to have. So you can send this, cut and paste this, and send this to your finance person or send them this uh, so they can gather all of the right materials for your application. I've also penciled in my budget. So it helps me kind of think through my application. And once you actually get in the system, you can go pretty quickly if you've done this. So let me see if I can reshare my other screen. And let's go back to this screen. Okay, let's see. There we go. I'm actually going to go back to my application here. And this is where we're talking about you need to pick something from the drop down in our narrative. 
and I'm chosen strategic plan. Now you don't have to save at each step because um, it's a lot of steps and I'm so sorry but it takes you all the way back to the top every single time. Uh, but it, um, it is important to note that it does not auto save so keep that in mind. This first question once uh, you get past the activities when you've chosen which category you're going to be under um, I'm going to say in my project summary that uh, we're going to bring in a planning expert to help gather stakeholders and lead strategic planning for the Baxley County 250 major events and projects to take place during the revolutionary anniversary era. So that's your elevator speech. This will end up on your grant agreement. So this needs to be really to the point of what is your major goal to accomplish with this, um, with this application. And th make sure you're thinking about what are you going to spend money on to reach that goal? Because we're going to get to that in just a second. So the next section is the detail part and execution of plan. And I'm going to cut and paste my answer for this. So I'm bringing in a professional strategic planner. And I talk about the details of what that person's going to do. Impact. Um, what is and this is important for this section here this mainly is about the deliverables this um, also will show up on your grant agreement so it is very important that this is specifically about a tangible deliverable in this example the final product will be a report from the strategic planning sessions outlining the major events and projects of the committee and the first steps to begin tackling those activities so the final product will be the strategic report so the, think about this as a tangible deliverable when you're answering this how do you measure success question. And then the next section is inclusion. And our committee is going to um, commit to at least one major event and one major project to apply to those historically disenfranchised. I'm just making, again making this up for my fictitious county. But this is a way to make sure that you you're asking your planning person to talk about this specifically inclusiveness specifically in your planning. And I think that's important to, to say that you've that's part of your plan. And then you get bonus points when you have partnerships. So this particularly comes in play. You ex get an extra five points on, on when we have the competitive grants. Uh, so make sure that you include all of your uh, folks that you're going to be working with. Now, I want to finish my timetable, but how do you do it? Uh, you do have to save the form to be able to get to planning and timetable. And as I said, it'll take you all the way to the top. So I'm going to scroll down now, and I now have an option. I'm going to add a row, and I'm going to say um, hire, street, um, let's see, hire professionals. So we're going to professional. So we're going to hire strategic planner and we're going to accomplish this no later because keep in mind we will not let you know about the first round of grants until October 4th and that means I would not plan on um, hiring anybody or doing anything until probably November 1st. You know just keep in mind when that award date when you would be notified. Um, that's in the competitive grants but again with these uh, $3,000 non-competitive County 250 grants, uh, as soon as the application's in and we, we verify that all the paperwork is correct, then we can go ahead and send you that information and you don't have to wait on that. I'm gonna save that row and then you would just continue to add, it takes you back to the top, you would continue to add additional rows uh, till you have all of your timetable complete. So I would expect a little bit more in there, um, but for right now, I'm just gonna mark this as complete. Then we have assurances and certifications. This is basically saying that you agree that everything on here is accurate. You're willing to have a meeting with me before you start spending money. Uh, and I usually try to do a, a grantee webinar um, or touch base with everybody before uh, once you get your grant award. Um, so just review everything. This right here, when you say yes, is like a signature. So who is the authorizing uh, official for the, the applicant, which would be your fiscal agent? You would put their information in there. 
and I'm going to sign this and I'm going to be the county administrator in this um, in Baxley County and uh, we're going to sign it um, so on the 25th. The other thing about a county applicant or municipal applicant, it is best practice to make sure that your chief elected officer is along for the ride. And they, if you've talked to them about this process, you've gotten them on board with your resolution, I'm sure that they would be fine with this application going forward. Um, but you want to make sure that the fiscal agent, if it is the county or municipality, you're looping in your chief elected official. And we're going to make Charles Baxley our chief elected official in our county and he's and put his information here and save the form. I'm going to mark it as complete. And now we're on to our support materials. So um, I we're running out of time. So I just wanted to, to mention you just click on here and select your file. You do have to add a description. It is required for a county. You would only have to add these three items here. And as you come down to required for County 250 organizing grants, you also have to have a contract contact spreadsheet and documentation of your resolution. We do prefer signed copies of the resolution if you can get a copy of that. Now, if I marked this in complete and submitted this application without those attachments, oh, it's not going to let me do it. Okay. Um, then it would, um, then I would probably negotiate this back to you and say, that it is, uh, we need these other documents because I think the only ones that it's going to stop me from applying without are going to be these top three because they're not required in all grants, the other items. So let me find my, give me one second so we can mark this as complete. And I'm going to grab my um, documentation for Baxley County. So we have a W-9 for Baxley County. And I'm going to attach, see if it goes back to the same place. Yay, all right, our budget for this current year. And I'm going to attach the most recent operating uh, fiscal year. For nonprofits, some people submit a 990. Um, if, but with counties, a lot of times they have um, a financial statement for the previous year that's easy to add. Um, for a organization, if you had um, a treasurer's report at the end of the year, um, that would work. Um, so just make sure they just want to make sure that you're a stable organization, basically, and that you've had a financial statement from the previous year. Okay. I think it's going to let me mark as complete now. It did. So note that it did not require me um, because it's not required for all grants. It did let me say go without these two here, which are at technically required for this specific grant. So this would be an example where I would negotiate it back to you and say, I need you to, I'll open up this one section for you to add these additional documents to. And then finally, budget, um, we have the personnel breakdown. This would be associated with um, a uh, individual, like somebody who worked at the museum, and this is going to be their salary will be partially paid um, for this, this. And we do encourage administrative overhead cost only be 10% or less. So we don't like to use that a lot, but if you need to, and this is where you would put that. So personnel, it would be a staff person. If you are hiring a consultant for the strategic plan, then that would go under contractual breakdown. So again, just like our timeline, I'm going to add a row and I'm going to do uh, planning services and strategic plan leadership and report. And this person's going to be a little expensive. We're going to have them do everything here, all $3,000. This number right here for the County 250 organizing grants has to match $3,000.
your overall project, because you may find a strategic planner that is way more expensive than that um, or less. But if it's way more expensive than that, the part that you are requesting here in these top sections, supplies, equipment, contractual, budget, acquisition, we don't expect any of that on the county 250, but that is in there because all the budgets are the same. And this would be for your site um, and signage grant. And then the other expenses, this could be food for the strategic planning and things like that. Um, but again, the total needs to be $3,000 for these county organizing grants. If you have additional um, funds that are coming in, let's say that um, the county PRT is going to give you additional funding um, for $2,000 and it goes to the top every time and then I'm going to scroll back to sh cost share. This is this is non SC2 uh, 250 money. So I'm going to add another person. It's going to be the downtown merchants are going to supply um, they're going to give me and actually it's going to let's do in kind. And they're going to give us $500 worth of food for lunch for our committee and all of our stakeholders that are there. So this, uh, this other cost share, you can add as much as you want here. So if it's a much bigger project than $3,000, you can add the documentation of where that other funding is coming from. And that looks great on your application. It is not required. The County 250 is not a matching grant. So you do not have to have any funds here but you can add them if you would like to. The main thing is this total requested has to equal $3,000. All right, and then I'm gonna mark this as complete. I have all of my check marks. I have said that everything's complete. It now says green, I can submit it. I now have a submit application button. And if I hit this red button, you cannot edit your, your grant application anymore. So make sure that if the, you're waiting on documentation from your finance director and they need to get in there, don't hit this button until everything is ready to go. And then you will submit and you will be good to go. I'm gonna leave this one open so I can still use it to work in. But that is the bottom line for, I've gone through and I've done a complete application in about 30 minutes. So the main thing is gathering all of your pieces. And I appreciate y'all's patience with today. I know it is a lot of information uh, to look at, but we're going to um, get back to our slides. So bear with me. And I will get back to our slides so we can wrap up today and take any questions that anybody has. And let's see. So um, the thing to remember is that you can get lots of information on our website. And once you've done that first application, you've put in all that work, you've attached all those documents, you can then copy an existing grant and apply for another grant, which we fully th and think that most people will do, these county 250s will do, as you go to look at other opportunities for this. Uh, once again, I'm Heather Hawkins. Make sure you add me to your contact list because you'll get emails from both me and the SEPRT Grants Program. And Molly Fortune may be out and about and see you in a county. And of course, Bill Davies is with us today. And I thank him for joining us um, as uh, we go through some of this technical stuff, which I know is no fun. I will send you a copy of this uh, PowerPoint and I will do a follow-up email with some links. Is there anything in particular anybody has questions on or would like to um, would like to ask before we, we head out today. You're all asleep because I was so boring. I know it's complicated. I'm so sorry. Again, you're taking the, the people's money. We gotta be careful with our with our money. So thank you for your understanding of that and being a part of the process and doing the hard work out in your communities. Wow, Bill, yes. <laughs> Wanna say anything? <laughs> Just waving waving goodbye.
Thank you, everyone. Good luck, and please let me know if you need a one-on-one -on -one or help you walk through it. So we'll be glad to help you with getting those grants in. Again, September 16th is your first deadline. All right, thank you. Um.